So recently I've driven some of the new EV options from Mercedes. I've driven the EQE and the EQS, both the sedan variants, not the SUV variants. Would love to drive the SUV variants. I also got to spend a week with the new 2024 GLS, which is the big daddy of the Mercedes SUV lineup, sans the G-Wagon. And this week I spent my time in the 2024 GLE, but not just any GLE. This is a AMG GLE Coupe. Let's get into it. And before we dive too much into this vehicle specifically, let's quickly talk about the different trims offered with the GLE. So you do have a GLE SUV and a GLE Coupe. This again is a GLE Coupe, which is only offered in AMG trims right now. So you have the AMG GLE 53 and the AMG GLE 63S. This is the 53. Obviously there's a lot of difference between the 53 and the 63S, mainly the engine under the hood. We'll talk about a little bit of that during this review, but uh, we're gonna focus mainly on this, the AMG GLE 53 Coupe. All right, and with that, let's start off with the exterior here. And immediately you can see that the Coupe profile makes this vehicle look like a sports car had a baby with a tank. <laughs> it's pretty beastly. That color is called Twilight Blue Metallic. I quite like it, it's a deeper blue. When the sunshine hits it, it really stands out. You have that Mercedes AMG waterfall grill with the Benz logo huge in the center of the grill and the AMG badge smaller to the right side of the grill. You also get AMG treatment around the vehicle in the front here. It gives us larger air openings in the front fascia for cooling and aero. You can obviously see that AMG style bulged hood, which is a staple for AMG vehicles these days. And of course, looks really good. We have the full LED headlamps with the new signature DRLs, the same ones we saw in the 2024 GLS. And there I said it looked like landing strip lights. And I think that holds true here as well. I like them, it looks really good. Around the side, we do have power folding body colored side mirrors with integrated turn signals. Also something that I really like when SUVs do. Always nice for peace of mind that you're not gonna get clipped in the side mirrors. We have 21 inch AMG twin five spoke wheels with black accents and these are an upgrade for the AMG 53 GLE. In the rear, we're looking at massive quad exhaust pipes, chrome tipped, ready to roar. We have the AMG badging, the GLE 53 badge, and full LED tail lights. And you can really see that raked rear end with the small lip spoiler here. But before we open up that hatch and check out the cargo volume, let's first take a look at the full dimensions of the GLE Coupe. And the dimensions of the GLE, you have a full length of 195.3 inches, a wheelbase of 115.6 inches, a total width of 84.9 inches, and a height of 67.7 inches. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and pop that hatch and check out the cargo volume you get here. Obviously, the coupe is gonna be suffering in cargo volume compared to the SUV. That raked roof line is definitely gonna cut into some of your cargo volume, but you are looking at 27.5 cubic feet behind the second row. You can fold that second row down and get a total of 63.2 cubic feet, which is plenty of room for pretty much anything that you wanna carry back here. You also do get a little switch here that will lower the suspension. It is running on air suspension. We'll talk a little bit more of that as we drive, but uh, you can lower it so it's easier to get stuff in and out of this cargo area. All really great things from a luxury crossover for sure. But with that, let's go ahead and close it up and uh, check out the engine that powers this AMG. All right, and like I said, there are two variants of the AMG GLE. You have the 53, which is what we have here, and the 63S. This one comes with an AMG enhanced three liter inline six turbocharged engine with hybrid assist. Pushes 429 horsepower, 413 pound-feet of torque. You do have AMG speed shift TCT nine speed automatic transmission. And that should be good for a zero to 60 time of 4.9 seconds, which 
will test out. You also have AMG's Ride Control Plus suspension based on Aromatic. We have AMG Performance 4Matic all-wheel drive and the AMG Dynamic Select system. And like I alluded to, the 63S comes with a V8. That's a four liter bi-turbo V8, pushing 603 horsepower, 627 pound-feet of torque, and has a 3.7 second zero to 60. So obviously, if speed and power are your only focus, that's the option to go for obviously going to cost more money. This one's got good numbers on paper. We'll talk about how it drives when we get to driving it here in just a second. But before we can do that, let's take a look at the interior, starting with those rear seats. All right, we're going to quickly check out the second row seating here. Uh, just to show you kind of how I fit back here. 6'1", bigger guy, but even with the rake roof, I have plenty of headroom here, plenty of knee room and foot room behind the passenger seat. I've got my own AC vents. You got two USB-C charging ports. I've got a fold down armrest with cup holders. All great there. Really nice seats with black leather, suede, brown leather really good combination you'll see more of that as we get in the front seats as well but really not too much to talk about back here just they're comfortable seats even for larger adults all right let's jump in the driver's seat check out the rest of the interior and the tech then we'll take it for a drive All right, and we're here in the front, in the driver's seat. And again, these brown and black Napa leather seats with some suede inserts. We got the AMG logo over here. They are heated and cooled seats, very nice. You also have some wood grain trim with uh, brushed aluminum accents. All really nice, but uh, first let me pick you guys up and turn this thing on and I'll show you around. All right, and it is a push button start. And you immediately see the dual 12.3 inch screens. You got a touch screen here, a normal screen here for your driver information display. This screen is running the latest MBUX Mercedes user experience. You've got Mercedes navigation. You've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. All really nice, all nice and responsive. A decent looking infotainment system. All the materials on the dash are really nice looking. You've got all your AC and heat vents right here. Below that is all your AC and heat controls. And then of course, down here, you've got a wireless phone charger and two USB type C ports here for interfacing with the infotainment system and charging your phone as well. You've got our cup holders and then your normal kind of command center control, little touchpad for your infotainment system. You've got your volume rocker, your dynamic mode switch, which we'll talk about soon. Uh, a button for your cameras and you do have a full 360 camera can obviously put it into reverse here and get that backup camera. You've got a quick button for some of your uh, favorited features and functions. This is your radio favorites, telephone, radio and media, navigation and map, and again your volume rocker there. Right back here is a toggle for your air suspension so you can lower and raise the vehicle with this right here. And then a nice soft armrest, big cubby, our steering wheel is the AMG Performance steering wheel with leather and suede. You've got your dials here to dial in certain features, including your uh, dynamic drive modes, all your touch capacitive buttons here on the steering wheel as well. And you can see the AMG logo here. And then of course, our driver information display, which can be toggled through different looks including a sport look, a super sport look, understated, our full navigation map here, your driver assist features, an off-road feature, all really cool features. Usually keep it on the classic. We also do have a Bermster surround sound system, 
64 color lighting array in here, illuminated running boards, and a panoramic sunroof. Just a ton of features here, as you might expect from a Mercedes. But I think we're about done looking at the interior. I think it's time to get this thing out on the road, drive it, and talk about the driving experience. Let's get it. All right, and let's get out on the road. As you can tell already, uh, you already get a bit of an exhaust note. It is immediately known that this is a bit sporty. It's not super loud. We are in the comfort setting. So we're not trying to blow anybody away right now, but it's a decent note, of course. You've got a quick toggle button here. You can toggle it with your dynamic modes, but you can turn on that exhaust note to be a little bit more sporty and definitely wakes it up a bit more there. Then of course you can turn the whole thing into sport mode and sport plus mode. And that's gonna give you all the power, all the exhaust, the burbles, And again, we'll check out a zero to 60 here in a bit, but uh, let's just put it back into comfort mode for now. And in comfort mode for day-to-day -day driving, it's decently comfortable. I think one of the things I liked about the non-AMG GLE SUV, the GLE 450 that I drove last year, I think it was, um, was it was so much more comfortable for just day-to-day -day driving. Not to say that this is uncomfortable, but you can definitely tell it was uh, set up to be more sporty that air suspension does wonders for this thing but it's still meant to be a sporty vehicle it doesn't really like to go slow there's a lot more jerking from the from slowing down or from a takeoff than the smoother nature of the gle 450. That being said, even in comfort mode, if you put your foot down, it's gonna go. You do have paddle shifters back here, so you can row your own gears if you really wanted to. Didn't really mess with those the entire week. Never really do, even on sports cars. If I want to manually row my gears, I want a stick shift. But I see how uh, they're important for some people. Interior-wise as the driver, everything's super easy to touch super easy to control. You've got controls on the steering wheel. You've got your easy command center down here in the console. Even the touch screen is close enough and easy to touch. Driving position is really good. You can get a good seating position, get a hold of the steering wheel. It's an electronic adjusting steering wheel, so you can uh, go up and down, back and forth with it and get a really precise uh, position. It's also a heated steering wheel which is always nice for winter time. Not really a big concern right now in July in Texas. One of the features I didn't touch on going through some of the tech in this thing was the uh, voice activation. So you do have the keyword of calling the vehicle's name where it will activate and do different uh, requests. Uh, in my personal experience, it's been shoddy and not the best. But if you like voice activation, the assistants like Google or Apple's, you could probably tune it and get the uh, commands to work that you are uh, really needing to work if you own this thing. Fuel economy wise, you're looking at 18 miles per gallon city, 22 highway with a combined of 20 miles per gallon. Again, for a sporty crossover SUV, that's not bad, but it is premium fuel only. So always have to take that into consideration. Of course, if you've got the money to buy this thing, probably not too big of a deal for you. During my full week with this thing, I've been averaging 20.5 miles to the gallon. That's with, uh, pushing the car a little bit, having fun, letting it idle as we're doing video and stuff. So definitely getting over 20 miles per gallon is not hard. And I've taken this thing everywhere from downtown Dallas to the suburbs to back country roads like we're on now. So that's really good. Speaking of back country roads though, this is a perfect time to test out a zero to 60 run, 
as uh, nobody's around back here. So let's get to that right now. All right, so we're on a good straightaway, dead stop, ready, set, go. Sixty. <laughs> Just blew past. So it's pretty quick. It's pretty quick. You got that rev matching downshifts. Obviously that burble. <laughs> All super fun. The whole uh, electric car sports craze kind of ruins that speed for you because you're just once you feel that instant torque from an electric motor. It always feels like uh, turbocharged gas engines get bogged down, but still super fun, still pushes you back in the seat. And again, it's a Mercedes. We've got all kinds of good tech and features in here for drivers. You've got parking assist. You've got radars all around the vehicle. You've got decent cruise control. No radar guided cruise control or lane keeping assist really. But let's go ahead and find a place to pull back over. We'll talk about the price, some of my final thoughts, and we'll wrap the video up there. All right, guys, and after all that fun, finally, let's get to uh, the price of this thing. Again, this is basically the base model of the coupe, the AMG 53, uh, and it bases at $89,800. Pretty penny for that. Of course, we do have some optional extras. So we're talking about $94,820 as a full MSRP on what I'm sitting in here. Of course, the 63S can go pretty much well over $100,000 easily. They didn't actually have pricing stats on the uh, 63S when I was looking at the stats for this one for the 2024, but again, well over a hundred thousand easily. And that's a lot of money for a lot of vehicle. Let's uh, jump back out. I'll give you some of my final thoughts here and we'll wrap the video up. All right guys, and in the seven years that I've been on YouTube and 15 years that I've been reviewing cars, I've had the opportunity to drive quite a few Mercedes vehicles. I've had the opportunity to drive quite a few variants of the GLE. I've had the GLE Coupe, the GLE SUV. I've had AMG variants, non-AMG variants. And last time I had a GLE SUV, the 450, so non-AMG variant. I did say in that review that if you're like a family person or, or using it for day-to-day -day driving and want comfort out of it, you want the extra storage out of it. It's one of the best that I've driven throughout my time. But obviously, if you're a sports car fanatic, a car enthusiast, and you like the crop of coupe SUVs, the GLE Coupe is definitely worth taking a look at. And the AMG variants are super fun. Obviously, if you want the most power and you don't care about the money, the 63S is gonna be your best option with that V8 bi-turbo engine. But this one with the inline six turbocharged engine is also a super good performer. And I have heard criticisms of the uh, GLEs, the interior not being up to Mercedes quality and stuff like that. But uh, I think it's a really stellar SUV. It's a lot of money, but you are getting a lot of vehicle. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the GLE Coupe. Also go check out TXGarage.com where we got a lot of written reviews as well as event and news coverage over there. And with that, guys, thanks for watching.